the biggest confusion in voice AI isn't about voice quality or single prompt versus conversation flow. It's knowledge bases. This is not easy to get right. There are so many questions. Where does the information belong in the prompt or an external knowledge base? And how do you make sure that your voice agent gets the right information at the right time? By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly how to use knowledge bases and how to use them the right way for your use case for beginner, intermediate and advanced use cases. I'm also going to give you some insight into retail's improved V2 knowledge bases and how to create dynamic knowledge bases that update before each call starts. My name is Alejo, co-founder and CEO of Amplify Voice. And what I'm about to show you is the difference between our real world production ready systems and simple demos that we might quickly prepare for a discovery call. Before we dive into the decision making of when to use each type of knowledge base and how to implement them, let's acknowledge the V2 that retail released for the knowledge bases that actually works way more accurately than the previous one. The previous version, uh, it had some issues around retrieval accuracy and not triggering at the right time. This new V2 uh, matches context for RAG way better and it's more reliable, they actually made an interesting design decision, which is when you have a knowledge base in the V2, when your voice agent has a knowledge base, it'll trigger at every single interaction. So they were able to reduce latency massively when using a knowledge base, but there are also some things that we need to be careful with that we're gonna look at. The number one question that I get is, should I put this information in the prompt or in a knowledge base? The rule of thumb is you want to put in the prompt the information that relates to personality, conversation logic, how to format uh, responses, business rules, conversation examples, anything that the agent should have awareness of at any point in time in the conversation should go in the prompt. So if your prompt controls how your agent behaves and how it says things, the knowledge base is fitting when there's large volumes of information, when the what the agent knows is really, really large in volume, like uh, 10 plus pages of documents or many small documents, varying context from one conversation to the other, uh, technical jargon. Medical use cases come to mind here where there's going to be varying context of whether the doctor is calling the AI receptionist voice agent or there's a patient with a medical history. But what we have found is that an external knowledge base, like a retail knowledge base, is not always better, even for large volumes of information. Of the seven years that I've been in the world of AI, knowledge bases is one of those concepts that it's, that it's taken me the longest to grasp, but I wanna make it very, very straightforward for you to understand. When we use a knowledge base, let's say that we add uh, a knowledge base to our retail voice agent, uh, I'm going to go with an upload file and I'm going to use uh, Hormozzi's uh, $100 million lost chapters. So let's go with that. And this is what happens when this document gets uploaded. It's not just a PDF that the voice agent has access to and can, and can read the whole at the same time. It gets chunked. It gets divided into small pieces that then the agent can reference. But what's important for you to understand is that the agent doesn't know what's in here. The agent just performs what's called a query. So if this is uh, Hormozzi's book, then this gets chunked and the voice agent says, hey, the user is asking about money models. And what, what's gonna happen in the background is there's gonna be a system, it's an embedding search if you're interested in that concept, that searches, well, which of these little chunks mentions uh, 100 million money models or other concepts related to money models? And those are the chunks that get returned to the voice agent. What happens with bad knowledge bases is these little chunks that are relevant uh, get returned to the voice agent and the voice agent just says them verbatim. And that is a bad experience. And that's kind of how the retail knowledge bases used to work. It would just spew the words that were in the document. When that's not really a very good user experience. With this new type of knowledge bases in retail, what you'll get is a lot more relevance. So it's better at finding the right pieces of information in these five megabytes of document, but also can transform what the words say to make sure that it's relevant and, and, and naturally phrased for a better user experience. So level one of building knowledge bases is going to be the retail knowledge base. Why? Because it comes embedded with the platform. It's very simple to use, but it is not always the most optimal. 
Regardless, it's very easy to get started with, and that's why it's gonna be level one. I can go to a new agent, click on knowledge bases, add, and connect my, my knowledge base, and bam, I can talk to my agent, ask you questions about the book. Uh, hey, I have a question about money models. Um, how can you summarize it for me? Absolutely. Here's a summary of money models as described in 100 M Lost Chapters by Alex Hormozzi. What is a money model? A money model is the okay, overall so structure it'll, of how <laughs> It'll go on and I asked it a very broad question, so it's giving me a very broad answer, but you see it now, uh, it has access to the, to the knowledge base. Even with no prompt, it'll give me the right answer. So that works just fine, but this is what I call the naive approach. Usually, these documents aren't very well curated. They're not uh, restructured, optimized for knowledge bases. So some pitfalls are when documents are not structured well, people tend to not test the knowledge bases very thoroughly for, for accuracy of the questions and answers. And it's generally harder to indicate to the voice agent when to use the information that is in the prompt versus access the knowledge base. And with retail knowledge bases, the way it's designed, it'll always access each knowledge base before answering. What you'll see up here in the latency is that at the bottom you see knowledge base that adds about 100 milliseconds, and that's at every single turn. The reason I don't recommend external knowledge bases is because they add way more than 100 milliseconds of latency, except for a very specific uh, use cases that has uh, really, really large amounts of information and you need extreme accuracy, but you don't care about latency. In those cases, you know, external knowledge bases are fine. But for the, pur the practical purposes of building voice agents, are you going to use a knowledge base within retail? Well, if it's straightforward, if it's uh, for a demo, th this is just fine. And that is what we're going to call level one. Level two requires a bit more work and counterintuitively a little bit more sophisticated of a knowledge base is when you put the knowledge bases in the prompt. A year ago, I would have suggested against this. Why? Because we were using a different model. We were using GPT-4.0 last year and at, at long context windows, when you have very long prompts, 4.0 would break down almost every single time. With GPT 4.1, if you've checked out my previous video on the new advancements of GPT 4.1 or the workshop that I've done in the school community where I really dig into what's different, one of the things that really stands out is it can handle a lot bigger context windows, not necessarily because of the maximum context window of, of a million tokens, but because even at 100,000 tokens, the previous model would, would completely break down. GPT 4.1 can maintain coherence a lot better. So what does that embedded knowledge base look like in practice? You're gonna see that this prompt is gonna go way over my recommended 2000 tokens per prompt because it contains a knowledge base. So we have the normal prompt with stages and the example interactions. And then at the bottom, we have a knowledge base. What you'll notice if you're familiar or programmer, uh, this is XML embedded in Markdown. And this is a pretty effective uh, and very consistent format that has worked. Each of these chunks gets represented as its own document and the voice agent not only has access to, you know, for this question, this is the answer, but this answer is phrased in a way that is human phrased. Hey, first, check if the network cable is properly connected to or if Wi-Fi is enabled. So we're going through troubleshooting process. It's not a manual, it's a proper question and answer. And that's a massive advantage of having this format of a knowledge base. By putting it in the prompt, it forces you to reformat it where, where knowledge bases, we usually go the, go the naive route of, let's just upload the manual and, and see what happens. So this level two requires a little bit more thinking through. And if you're curious how I created this, well, I have this master prompt that I've shared in other videos and, and uh, we'll link the, the video where I, where I share more of this. Uh, this is a master prompt for a project in Claude that creates and audits uh, and improves uh, voice agent prompts specialized for 4.1. And uh, we also have a document for knowledge base optimizations. Uh, you can feel free to pause and go over this or go check out my previous video where I dig a little bit more into this but we're essentially going through the formatting. Hey, you should format it this way. Uh, it should include the document number and say the title, in this case, there are books and category of the book. So it emulates this behavior for any type of knowledge base. For example, this is for an IT use case and it emulates that same type of formatting. 
this is extremely effective. This has right now uh, 30, 30 questions, 30 Q and A's, and it's about 4,000 tokens. We've created a voice agent that has 108 questions and multiple functions like verification and call transfer, and it works like a charm. So this level two of a uh, knowledge base that gets embedded into the prompt, you can't go the naive route. All of this needs checking, and there's gonna be a lot of manual checking in order for this to work well, and to make sure that the answers that your voice agent is giving is the tone and style that you want it to answer in. This is my recommended approach uh, almost across the board, except for what we're gonna call level three, which is going to be a dynamic type of knowledge base. What does that mean? Well, sometimes our clients are gonna have uh, knowledge bases that they wanna change over time. Let's say it's an actual physical store and they have new holiday hours. So we have to change the knowledge base. And instead of you know them messaging you on Slack and saying, hey, I wanna make this change, so we wanna change these hours to this thing, they can do it themselves with these dynamic knowledge bases that get inserted in the prompt. So they're as effective as this but they get to be dynamic and you don't have to take care of all the nitty gritty client changes. Why? Well, because you're gonna have a shared knowledge base document. This could be as simple as a Google Doc. So we're gonna put our knowledge base in there and then when our client comes, uh, has, a, has a new new question to add or some modifications to make, they can make them directly there. Your client can also add a new type of question to this document uh, with the corresponding uh, uh, question and answer and how it, they want it phrased. But let's be real, uh, most clients won't in, go into a document to write in XML or ask an AI to write it in XML. So there's a, a bit more thinking that has to go through this. And it could be as simple as an N8N scenario, which checks when there are modifications to this document and makes sure that uh, uh, the whole document is formatted the, the right way. So if your client comes and says, you know, just adds at the, at the end of the document, hey, new question and answer, this will get fed dynamically to your prompt, which I'm gonna show you how in a second, but this is not the right format we wanna follow. So we can have two processes here. Before a call starts, this whole knowledge base gets added dynamically to the voice agent, but also, the second process is when this document gets updated, there's an AI that checks, hey, does this document have the right formatting? And if not, we'll modify it. So what the document auto formatting could look like is this Google Drive trigger, which essentially triggers when this document gets modified. We can trigger it every minute, and in this case, let's go with every hour. Then we would get that document so we can actually look into the content that's inside that document pass that content to this AI agent, which has the prompt, your role is to ensure the knowledge base document is formatted consistently. Since there are going to be updates throughout the lifetime of the document, all updates should be amended to follow the following structure. And it's essentially that, that XML structure of the knowledge base. So what it's gonna do is gonna receive this document, which at the end doesn't have that same structure. It has a different structure. That's kind of what the emulating the client just changing the document or adding a new question. So we're gonna execute this and this um, agent will have access to this update a document in Google Docs. And now if we go to the Google Docs, then now this is formatted correctly. There's a 31st question. Uh, how do I log in if I don't remember my password? And then it adds a little bit more uh, context to the question. It actually modified the answer uh, which I didn't expect. Uh, so we can, you know, always tune the behavior of this AI agent to be like, don't change the content of the answer, just the formatting, stuff like that. But now we have a foolproof system in which if a client says, hey, I wanna, you know, have a knowledge base that I can update often, great, well, you can have that, uh, but we don't suffer the risk of, of degrading the quality of our knowledge base simply because the client wants to update it themselves or do a lot of changes. But now how do we integrate this document into our prompt? Because at the end of the day, we wanna, we, that's what we wanna do. So let's remove that and add a new variable that's gonna be uh, knowledge base. So now we have this dynamic variable knowledge base. Okay, well, how do we go about inserting that uh, uh, in from this document? So how we would insert that document, that new knowledge base document 
would be by getting that document and then making the call. So we can trigger this call, be it from a, a you know, manual trigger just for the demo, but you can also integrate it into your CRM, let's say HubSpot or Notion. So this is a trigger that when contact gets created, this workflow will trigger and we can call them with our dynamic knowledge base relevant to the use case. So we're gonna get that document, get that content. So now if I click the uh, execute workflow, what's gonna happen is I'm going to get here I'm gonna be able to see the knowledge base as a dynamic variable. If you're not familiar with this, I've done plenty of videos on all these settings and all that stuff, but we're calling from this number, we're calling to this number. This is the agent ID we're using, which is right here. And finally, this is the dynamic variable that we're gathering. So knowledge base is the name of the dynamic variable and we're passing in the full document uh, and just keep in mind that you would need the JSON stringify to make sure that this is formatted correctly because sometimes it would not be formatted correctly. In fact, now that I look at it, these would not be necessary if we use the JSON stringify because the apostrophe gets added. So now if I run this, I think it's, it's yeah, it's gonna give me an error because uh, I deleted the number and whatever, but um, uh, this is the exact format that you need in order to uh, create a dynamic knowledge base that gets added to the prompt at right before the call happens. We want to add summer hours to this. Great. We can add it here. And uh, uh, honestly, this is the most effective way to to create a more complex knowledge base and dynamically updated knowledge base. So we have the three levels retail knowledge base. If you want to build something quick, uh, uh, fast, that may not always work perfectly may not always have access to the right information, uh, but it works decently and the V2 works way better than it used to. Then we have the level two, which is the prompt where now you can start messing with um, uh, how do you want it to sound? What do you want the voice agent to, to say and how do you want it to phrase that information? And then finally, the level three, which is the dynamic knowledge base, which is a lot closer to real world implementations where our clients need uh, updating their knowledge base. But if they send us a message and we go and update the thing and then we check with them, it's very inefficient. They could do it themselves and we can have an AI just check that the formatting of what they added is in the correct format. So today we looked at how to fix knowledge bases. This is a question of do we put it in the prompt? Do we put it in the knowledge base? Why isn't it gathering the information from the knowledge base if I know it's there? So I hope that this gives you guidelines on how to choose which one and understanding that if you're going to use a knowledge base in retail, like an external document or an external service like Pinecone to do a knowledge base, just make sure everything's in the right formatting and phrased the way you want it to be phrased, ideally in a question and answer format, because it's very congruent with what the voice agent is doing. It's having a conversation. The user asks a question, then we want to make sure we phrase it in the right way. Don't be naive with knowledge bases. They don't just work because it's AI. There's some thinking that goes to it. So I encourage you to explore the level two, which is embedding the knowledge base into the prompt. And if you really need to take it to the next level for any use cases that you have, you have the dynamic knowledge bases that will use an external document that both you and your client will have access to uh, and you can modify it together, making sure it's the right, rightly formatted. And before any call starts, this prompt will get dynamically, this is incredible, uh, will get dynamically converted into the full knowledge base. And now you know. So, so go out there, uh, try it out for yourself and make sure you drop a comment below because every use case is different, whether you're handling 20 very technical jargon documents or 100 very simple documents, there's always different ways to do this that can be most effective for your use case. So I'd love to read how you're using knowledge bases below. Finally, there's a lot more value coming, so hit that subscribe button and hit the like button so other people can also benefit from this content that I make with all my heart and all my brain because this information is worth sharing. If you have something specific you're struggling with, like knowledge bases or anything else, come join us in school. Uh, we have four live sessions a week and, and we really deep dive into people's issues and how to make sure that their voice agents are ready for the real world. And remember that at the end of the day, what's most important is that you never stop prompting.